This video will show you how to install the AFG2 XO6 cooling door kit from Hive. This is a supplement to the printed document. First, make sure you have all the parts supplied in the cooling door installation kit. kit contains an instruction sheet. The first page of the instruction sheet has a list of all the other supplied parts. Instructions also have pictures of all the steps. The kit contains first of all the cooling door assembly, power supply assembly, and a small parts bag that has all the other parts in it. Inside the bag you'll find a gold colored quarter inch bolt, it's hollow, the USB flash drive with the software upgrade on it, two black nylon cable guides, 14 white nylon wire ties, six adhesive back cable anchors, a quarter inch zinc plated solid bolt, quarter 28 nut with integral lock washer, four quarter inch flat washers and a small 0.1 inch screwdriver. This won't be inside the parts bag. That should be everything you need. If you're missing anything give us a call. Now we need to gather a few basic hand tools together. You'll need a 7 16 inch combination wrench, a 3 8 inch combination wrench, an 11 30 seconds wrench, 7 16 socket with a ratchet, quarter inch drive, a pair of slip joint pliers or needle nose pliers, a small pair of diagonal cutters, a number two Phillips screwdriver, and a quarter inch flat bladed screwdriver. First, unplug the power cord from the G2 and from the wall outlet just to be safe. First thing we'll do is install the door. We have to remove the old door from the G2, but we want to save the handle and the magnetic safety switch actuator because we'll use these on the new door. Take the handle off using a Phillips screwdriver. Set the handle and hardware aside so you can use it on the cooling door. Remove the magnetic actuator. Set this aside to use on the new door also. Take out these three screws to remove the old door. Save the screws and the washers and the nuts. We will use them to mount the cooling door. Mount the cooling door on the hinge using the hardware you just removed. Don't tighten these screws all the way right now. Just snug them up because you may have to slide the door around on the hinge a little bit later to adjust it. Put the handle on the cooling door. You'll notice that the handle can move back and forth a little bit. This determines how deep the door sets in the frame. So slide the handle back and forth to get it 
to the point where the door is flush with the frame when it's closed. And then tighten the screws thoroughly when you're done. Put the magnetic safety switch actuator on the cooling door. And you can tighten these screws all the way right now. Install two cable guides in these locations. Remove the top and bottom screws from the left hand side of the hinge. Put a cable guide on each screw. Put the washer under, this, under the cable guide and then reinstall the screw in the hinge with the cable guide pointing to the left. Once you have both of these installed, feed the wire from the fan down through both cable guides. The wire should go down through the opening behind the stainless steel work surface. Pull most of the wire down through the cable guides. Leave a small loop at the top so that the wire doesn't have a kink and so it doesn't bind when the door is open and closed. This is what the finished installed wire should look like. Now, these three screws may need to be loosened a little bit to move the door. You want a gap at the top and the bottom of the door. And you don't want the door to drag on the work surface when you open and close it. Once you've got the door adjusted properly, tighten the three screws in the hinge and check the fit again. Stick one of the adhesive backed cable anchors under the frame on the bottom of the machine close to the front and another one behind the actuator is shown here. Run the cable behind the actuator. Secure the cable to the front cable anchor using a wire tie. Secure it to the back cable anchor in the same way. Install power supply. If you haven't unplugged the G2 from the AC power source by now, please do so right now before you continue. Use a screwdriver to open the rear electronics enclosure. Use a socket to remove the lower bolt from the top mounting bracket. and remove the upper bolt from the bottom mounting bracket. Save the washers, you'll use these again. These are the two bolts you should remove. Clip the wire tie holding the bundle of wires to the power supply. This was just there to secure them during shipment. The top bolt of the power supply will use the solid bolt supplied in the kit. The four washers as shown. One washer on the outside of the box, two on the inside. The bottom bolt will use the hollow bolt supplied in the kit. The wires will feed through this bolt. So put one washer on the outside of the box. Put the bolt through the box and put two washers on the inside, just like the top bolt. Put the power supply over these two bolts. Add another washer on the inside above the power supply plate. 
Now the bottom bolt nut is the one supplied with the kit. It's a quarter 28 inch nut and it won't fit on the top bolt. The top bolt uses the nut that you took off. Tighten the top and bottom bolts with the socket. Be careful not to over tighten them. This is how it should look. You notice the bottom bolt is the one with the hole in it. And that's where we'll feed the wires through. Let's take the wires coming from the door fan, feed them through the hollow bolt into the cabinet. I'm going to secure the loose wire by putting a cable anchor on the bracket as shown, and another one further back on the bracket as shown here. Use a cable tie to secure the wire to the first cable anchor, and secure it to the second one also. Take the excess wire, sort of form it into a coil, secure it with one or two cable ties. Now remove the insulation from the three wires, put them in the terminal block as shown. The white wire, of course, goes in the W terminal, the red in the R terminal, and the B in the, or the black in the B terminal. Tighten all three screws when you're done using the supplied small screwdriver. Now secure the entire bundle to the anchor point provided on the power supply base plate. This provides strain relief for the three wires. You don't want the weight of the bundle hanging on the wires. Black, red, white. This is what the installed cable should look like. Now, remove the nut from the ground stud in the bottom right of the box. So nut and star washer on here, save those. This is the ground wire from the power supply. Put it on the ground stud. Put the star washer back on. Put the nut back on. And tighten the nut. Careful not to over tighten it. You can easily twist the stud off the box. Find the I.O. connector. This is the right-hand black connector plugged into the DMC4030 box. It's labeled I.O. Loosen the two screws that hold the connector on using the supplied screwdriver. Don't try to take the screws all the way out. Pull the connector off. Now this connector, J12, has to be disconnected from the signal conditioner board. You might need to wiggle it a little bit to get it off. Loosen screws in position 6 and 7 on this connector and remove the orange and black wire. Don't remove any other wires from this connector. Find the I.O. connector from the new power supply and plug it into the DMC4030 controller where you removed the old I.O. connector. Tighten the screws with the screwdriver. You'll notice this connector has a lot of wires in it, including an orange and black wire. Now take that orange and black wire coming out of the new connector and put those in the terminal block. The 
orange wire goes in position 6, the black wire goes in position 7. Once you get the wires in the block, tighten the screws. And plug the connector back into the signal conditioner board. Cut the old orange and black wires off, the ones leading to the old connector, so that you can pull the old connector out of the bundle and discard it. Now bundle the new orange and black wire along with the ground wire into the same bundle with the other wires running up the inside of the case, just to make everything neat and get it out of the way. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Find the safety relay. It's located under the large transformer on the left hand side of the box. It's gray and black. Cut the wire ties holding the bundle of wires going to this relay. We're going to remove two wires from this relay. The brown wire from the second terminal down and the blue wire from the fourth terminal down on the left. To remove these wires, grab the connector not the wire with a pair of pliers. Wiggle up and down. Don't wiggle from side to side. They're a little difficult to get off. Now put a couple of cable anchors on the top inside surface of the box. Run the AC power cable coming from the power supply across the top of the box and secure it to these two anchors. The wires coming out of this AC power cable have piggyback connectors on the ends of them and you're going to plug the old wires onto these wires. The brown wire connects to the black wire with an L label. And the old blue wire connects to the red wire with a piggyback connector. The brown and black wires labeled L go on the second terminal down. The red and blue wires go on the fourth terminal down. This is what the whole thing should look like when you're finished. Brown and black, second terminal down. Red and blue, fourth terminal down. Now bundle these wires back together. Put the new wires in the bundle also. Make sure you've removed all your tools and nuts and bolts and everything from the cabinet. Close the door and latch it. Plug the power cord back into the G2 and plug it into the wall outlet. Turn the power switch on. The model number and the software control version come up on the first screen. If you have control 13.02a or greater, you do not need to do a software upgrade. If you do need to upgrade the software, use the following procedure. From the main menu on the G2, pick Setup Calibrate, Machine Setup, Advanced Setup, and then Upgrade Control. You'll be asked to insert the USB drive. Insert the drive that was supplied with your kit. Press the Enter key when you're ready. Press plus for yes. Now the machine will terminate and load the new software. Once the machine starts back up, Show the new control version. And you can press the start key to park the machine.
If you want to test the phantom buzzer operation, just run a short test on the gyratory compactor, but use gauge blocks instead of a mold. See the printed instructions and you'll see details of how the fan and buzzer are supposed to operate. Thanks again. If you have any questions, please give us a call. 303-566-1000.